Hello and welcome, I'm your host KB and you're watching The Retrospective. Freakazoid is one of the lesser known WB TV series. It first aired in 1995 and ran for two seasons. Super Team Extraordinaire, Freakazoid, Freakazoid, runs around in underwear, Freakazoid, Freakazoid, press his Washington DC, Freakazoid, Freakazoid, and something that is on TV, Freakazoid, Freakazoid. The show is also known by its awkward title of Steven Spielberg Presents Freakazoid. This is due to it being produced in part by both Steven Spielberg's Amblin Television as well as Warner Brothers Animation. Throughout the 90s, Warner Brothers were pumping out hit original programming with more goofy, cartoonish style shows like Tiny Toons, The Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain. As well as some more serious superhero programming such as Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated Series. Both of which were obviously already established DC characters. So WB created a blend of superhero with the cartoony antics of shows like Animaniacs and thus we have Freakazoid. The show revolves around Freakazoid the alter ego of a 16 year old computer nerd named Dexter who's the embodiment of the atypical geek character from the 90s. Oh this is great! It's gonna make my computer twice as fast! It'll allow for true dedicated multitasking and at 300 megahertz and 16 megs of RAM I can interface- Dexter honey, honey, you're boring us again sweetie. Dexter can transform back and forth between his freakazoid persona by using the phrases Freak Out and Freak In. Freakazoid is empowered with super strength as well as super speed and he also possesses all the information on the internet. He is the definitive oddball character in the vein of the mask while spitting one-liners and breaking the fourth wall. You know, I'd just like to pause here a minute and say what a gas and a sagacious experience it is working on today's show. Because I walked onto the set today and everyone looked at me and said, we're going to have fun. Fun, fun, fun. And then Joey Leahy came, the announcer. Tell me he's not great. Tell me he's not great. Go ahead, tell me. You can't, right? You can't. Unlike other superhero-based shows, there is no real reoccurring threat or overarching storyline. There's also no set structure to the show, which opens the stories for the writers to have a bit more fun, as the stories are seemingly set aside for the sake of comedic segments and seemingly random gags. It also features a lot of parody or tongue-in-cheek style storylines, making fun of things such as classic horror, or other superhero cliches such as the origin story. Oh, freak out! <laughs> See? I can do it too! Ha! The strength of the show lies in its abundant humour, featuring many genuine laugh out loud moments. This isn't surprising, considering it features several of the creative heads behind WB's prior hit show, Animaniacs, which featured a similar style of humour, as well as being littered with pop culture references, which make it feel like a product of its decade. And this isn't a bad thing in my opinion. The show's very self-aware, regularly breaking the fourth wall, as well as making fun of itself. We interrupt our regularly scheduled program to bring you this special report from the WB Network. What exactly is the WB? Can someone tell me this? What's it mean, the WB? The water bucket? The wimpy boy? The wet bananas? I don't know what! The weird butt? What? I'm asking! This has been a special report from the Weird Butt Network. We now join Freakazoid already in progress. The production here, as you'd expect, is top notch, featuring awesome animation and a great score for the series. The show's random sense of humour is also prevalent throughout the show's intro and theme song. Hey, hey, hey. 
went surfing on the internet Then was that just cyberspace? He turned into the greatest boy He sprung and super quick He drives up and it's crazy From speeds of the tank It's home base, he's a freak of land Production-wise, it bears the signature feel of other WB productions like Batman the Animated Series. But here it has a much lighter tone, which suits the fun mood of the show. Paul Rugg brings life to the excitable and over-the-top Freakazoid, while other notable actors such as David Warner... Frank Welker and Tim Curry lend their voice talents to various characters throughout the show's run. To my surprise, the show wasn't a hit during its initial run, which in my opinion, it had all the makings to be so. But hon, isn't there a dance tonight? Jay Dexter, I'd love to go to the dance with you, if I were ugly and dead. Recapping our top story, at this very moment, the city's top villains are being transported by Freakazoid to the remote country of France, Europe. I say, look at that little pig. La, la, la! You dumbheads better get out of Scotland! And if we don't? Now that's entertainment! I'm not sure if this is due to marketing errors, or the show just not finding its audience within the kids' WB lineup. The show eventually did find an audience several years later during reruns on the Cartoon Network where it became a cult hit. Even so, I still feel the show remains somewhat of a hidden gem. While I do feel the show could be successful in today's modern era of more adult themed cartoons, I doubt there's any plans for the WB to rejuvenate this seemingly failed series. Luckily enough, all 24 episodes of the series have been released on DVD, which you can still go and pick up today. You're very popular in a number of state institutions! <laughs> Thanks very much for watching the show. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Retrospective. <laughs>